Okay. Is it ready to get started? Yeah, oh, okay. Just a second. Okay. Right. We're going to be starting with time right now. And of course, I'd like to thank everyone for making this debate possible. In this speech, I'm first going to be uh, refining the resolution, kind of setting this debate up, providing some background information because this is pretty specific, and then you going into our case. So the resolution today is California should pass the College for California initiative. So really what we're going to, uh, we're going to be finding California as the state of California should, as in implying this is a policy round, so we'll be enacting a policy here, and uh, passes and passes pretty straightforward. The College for California initiative, though, is, quote, uh, the California College initiative would allocate new revenue to pay up to four years tuition and fees for full-time undergraduate residents attending the University of California or Cal State, California State University who maintain a minimum 2.7 GPA or perform 70 hours of annual community service. It adds 0.7% to personal income tax rate, applied to taxable income over $250,000, and adds 1.7% to percent tax rate to income that's over $500,000. So essentially what it's doing is allowing to pay for tuition for all students that maintain above a 2.7 GPA or just 70 hours community service that want to attend a UC or a CSU. And it will be doing this by pay, raising taxes on the uh, top earners in the state. So uh, we're going to be passing this bill through normal ways and means. Our time frame will be as soon as possible. And the net benefits of this round will be going to California, whichever side can more benefits there should be winning this round. So with that being said, we have two main benefits that come out of this. Our first benefit is an economic benefit. That's our first contention. And really, this is going to be benefiting the economy of California in four different ways. The first is that it's going to be benefiting all the students that attend university. Since they're no longer being uh, for forced to pay tuition in such a high amount, currently California is the most expensive state in terms of public tuition, and it's predicted that by 2014, um, all, uh, it will be cheaper for a student in California to go out of state to go to college than to go to in-state California. So we can see that we have to really uh, provide a uh, provide opportunity for students in California to go for UCs or CSUs. So really what this will do is it will uh, allow students not to have to get in debt with student loans in the long term, which is bad for the economy because then they won't be able to spend on other things that they need to do and able to buy other products or invest in certain places. So really they're just kind of stagnant, just kind of a drain on the economy because they're not able to afford anything. So it really eliminates all the concept of student debts or student loans as people are able to go through college for free. This is good because then once someone's out of college, they're a more qualified worker and they're able to go in right into the workforce without having to worry about paying off their loans. Uh, our second benefit here, it goes to the family. We can see that a lot of families are really stretched for money right now in this economy, and we can see that by uh, not having to pay for tuition for all of, for their children to go through, that means that that family is then able to pay for other things as well and stimulate the economy that way. Since they're not paying for tuition as much, they're able to invest in other things or buy other things to stimulate the economy there. They're able to help themselves more, afford health care, other things like that, benefiting themselves when they have more money, their lives will improve, and the entire economy will improve as well. If they have other children, they'll be able to support them as well or pay for tuition for other places, and then if it's in the long term there. So really, we can see this will be helping the student and the family, uh, definitely. Yeah. So also, this will be helping the universities themselves. We can see that the universities currently do not have a lot of money uh, going into them. They're really struggling right now. They're having to make cuts in the long term. And this will, what this will do is provide a steady supply for the universities to have money in the long term. This is good because universities are really a major place for the society and the economy to grow. We can see that they hire huge amounts of people in both education and administrative staff, but also... Um, do research and have to hire maintenance and other programs to for improve students' lives. So they really create thousands of jobs throughout the entire state of California. And this will provide a steady income for uh, all of these people to be able to afford to do this in the long term. This is good because then the university will be able to expand more and just have enough money to come to stay where it is. It'll be able to do more research, possibly helping society there, and also just benefiting itself and being able to survive. Ultimately, uh, the final place this will be benefiting in the long term is the state itself. The government will have to pay less money in the long term. We can see that someone that goes to college is more likely to get a job, and therefore obviously less likely to be unemployed. So when someone has a college degree, they're more, able to get, they're more likely to get a job, as I said, which means that the government's not going to have to pay for unemployment or social security or welfare on this person for as long because they won't be um, unemployed and a drain on the system. They'll be able to support the government by paying taxes and doing other things like that There's instead of just being, uh, being uh, stuck yeah, on welfare or uh, unemployment. So that's the four places we'll have in the economy. Um, our second contention is that of societal benefits as a whole. And this is really, we can see that by having more people or more uh, opportunities for people to go to college, society will be benefiting. The first sub-contention of this is comes from the community service. There will be thousands of students that are going to do 70 hours of community service. We can see that community service is good for uh, many reasons. First of all, I'd like to point out that studies show that people that use community service early in their life are more likely to do it on their own in the future. So we can see that more people will be doing community service in the long term. This is good because it will lead to uh, all the benefits that come from it. Uh, community service. There's obvious ones that come out of it. We're going to talk about a few of them. First of all, more people will be able to help educate uh, children. A lot of children in inner cities are unable to graduate or be prepared enough for um, uh, uh, 
are uh, unable to afford all of these things like that, are able to afford to be educated. So there would be more community service helping people graduate from schools in the long term. Also to improve safety in neighborhoods throughout the world, uh, throughout the entire state, because um, uh, currently it's, California can be pretty dangerous and have pretty crime rates, but uh, community service looking to clean up uh, neighborhoods or provide after school programs for kids will be able to do that in the long term. And ultimately it leads to a better lifestyle for a lot of people that need help that are marginalized by society. I'll take your first question right now. Um, so will this keep more students in the system or add more students in the system? Uh, our plan does not have anything to do to raise the amount of people that will be accepted into the universities or anything like that. It's just going to be the current uh, amount of people. I just took a question away. Right. Okay. Again, if you can buy the time. Uh, our second subcondition about societal benefits is it increases the diversity of people going to college. We can see that when people no longer have to look at whether or not they can afford to go to college, more people will be able to do so. A lot of people can't afford to go to college and therefore aren't going in the first place. So we can see what happens is this is good because it will lead to less high school dropouts. That is because people will know, a lot of people drop out of high school right now knowing that they won't be able to go to college in the future. And, uh, because they can't afford it for the basic reason there. So they all drop out of high school, this is bad for them because then you, when you drop out of high school it's harder for you to get a job and you're more likely to go into crime. So we can see that there will be less high school dropouts knowing that they have an opportunity to go to college without having to pay. So really we can see that there's a clear benefit there. Also, um, going to college is better for the entire society as a whole as going to college has numerous benefits. First of all, you'll have a more educated voting base. We can see that more people will know what's going on in the world and be more educated and be able to vote in more educated ways, benefiting California as a whole. California is, um, the California government will benefit from here uh, because more people will be able to do that. Also, we can see that there's other benefits from people who are in college. As I said, you're more likely to have a job. It's also more likely that you'll live happier and you contribute more to the economy and invest more. Also, there's, uh, your children will be more likely to graduate high school. There's numerous benefits that come from someone going to college. And we can see that more people have the opportunity to go to college now because of the fact that they won't have to pay to go to a CSU or a UC. So for the, all of these reasons, I just strongly in favor of the affirmation team and that California should pass the College for California Initiative. Thank you. Okay. So it'll go two off case and then case in order. You might need another sheet. You might need two or two of your sheets for the off case. Actually, I might run three off case, so three sheets. Um, it depends on how many I get to, but it'll be a first, two off case, case in order, then case, uh, off case, other off case. Everybody ready? Yeah. The first is the critique. The the A is the framework. According to Line Up Gardner's Article 1, we must change 99% of schools use the lecture system. According to his article, class time is spent using the, the 98% of class time is actually used, uh, used, uses the lecture system. So meaning 98% of all class time spent in every single uh, form of institution in California actually uses the lecture system. The second point under this is that lecturing is a form of banking education. The definition of the banking form of education, the banking system of education is when there is an educator who educates students and uh, get, deposits information into the brains of students. Teachers deposit information into uh, to the brains of students and students are forced to memorize and repeat the process and regurgitate the information when they are told to. They are inherent, They are inherently taking in part, uh, they are inherently participating in the banking form of education, meaning they are being nothing but automatons used by the educational system to insert information into their brains. We have a couple impacts off this and we have a, a couple arguments as to why this is necessarily a bad thing. Also, on the, on the uniqueness part, uh, California's uh, school system like I said, all of it uses the lecture system. So here's the link. Because the plan keeps a lot of students inside the uh, keeps a lot of students inside of the educational system, the California educational system, this leads to a lot of dehumanization because the banking form of education is an inherently for uh, an inherent a dehumanizing form of education, and this is the internal link. The first is that banking, the banking system dehumanizes people because they are told information and then forced to regurgitate it at the teacher's disposal. They have no choice as to when they are told, they are, they are given no discretion as to when or when they don't have to give that information. When they're told they, are, they have to spit out the information taught by the teacher, they have to give it to the teacher. Meaning they are no longer owners of their own mind, but owners, uh, they are owned by the teacher because the teacher controls what information they are given and when they have to regurgitate that information. They are nothing but automatons of the educational system because they are in a system where they are forced to regurgitate information and then the teacher controls their brains. 
The second is human oppression created because people are nothing but automatons of the educational system. They do not realize that the teacher is nothing more than a master and they are a slave. Whereas the difference between a master and a slave relationship, the master actually gives the uh, the master gives orders to the slave, but the slave is actually crit- allowed to critically think about the information he is given. Whereas the student is not, because the student is forced, is forced into a system where he must memorize certain facts of information and is not given discretion as to how he may interpret the information. Instead, the teacher gives that discretion. This creates human oppression because they are nothing more than Robots and slaves. Um, any questions? Not yet. All right. The third argument is that this creates a zero value of life because the people will only think about the education because the teachers of the educational system are only going to tell them to think about the information they are given. We have a couple arguments as to why this is bad. This creates a zero value of life because people will no longer think critically about reality. Instead, the things that they are taught in the current educational system are about whether one plus one equals two. They aren't critically they aren't critically thinking and critically discussing about whether what one plus one is or what. Uh, Two actually is. Instead, they're only thinking about the information like one plus one. Because they don't critically consider reality, and reality is considered key to a person's humanity. They will only they will only exist in a life of material paradise, masquerading and masquerading themselves in a form of a capitalistic paradise, meaning they won't really truly consider reality because they're constantly told this information and forced to regurgitate it systematically. So the D is the O. Reject the 1AC because it endorses the big form of education by allowing students to stay in the educational system through the standards set up by the Cal- College for California initiative. Any questions? Okay. We have a couple of reasons why you should prefer the ultimate plan. The first reason as to why you should prefer the ultimate plan is we outweigh the de- massive dehumanization of human beings in the college system actually creates a systematic, uh, this systematic process whereby students are nothing become nothing more than robots of the educational system and they don't critically consider reality, thus resulting in our impacts. All those impacts outweigh cases because they argue that these economic benefits and these benefits to the families will uh, will actually help our economy. My argument against this is that if you dehumanize human beings and you give them a zero value to life, that's a world in which they are no longer human beings. There's no point to living at that point. Even though they might save a couple thousand dollars through the initiative, they're still going to be dehumanized beings. So let's go on to the first disadvantage. Okay. One. Research universities like USC, Santa Clara University, and Stanford have a lot have a lot of hefty fees. They do a brunt, they do a lot of uh, independent research. The College for California de incentivizes enrollment into these private California universities. The reason for this is because students are no longer given the same economic opportunities as they were at these private institutions. This loses a lot of time and funding, and plus a lot of students will be dropping out of the private universities to go to the public universities. Private California research uh, private California research universities are at the forefront of B research right now. B research is critical because unless we solve the Problem with the bees in the world right now. This this has a lot of key links to agriculture. The bees, the link, the plant actually takes a lot away a lot of private university students. This is the internal link. Because students students are key to funding, the reality is unless these private universities have all these students, these, these private universities aren't going to have enough funding. The plan destroys the funding because the funding is key to research and development because if these students aren't actually funding the research of these universities because they get subsidized for each student they have more importantly tuition, they're not going to be able to fund B research, which is one of the main things that Cal- California universities are about to cut right now from the re- their research programs. So in a world without B research, uh, the first part about this is that B's, uh, D are the... It's, the D are the impacts. The first part is that because we won't have enough bee research, we won't be able to solve for the bee issue going on right now. And bees are critical to the earth because right now bees pollinate the earth. The second is that pollination is key to our agriculture. In a world without bees pollinating our agriculture, is a world in which we have no agriculture, leading to the dehumanization of human beings because they aren't going to be able to harvest as much, and this is going to lead to a huge war over resources. Because in a world in which the resources are limited, this creates a huge, massive, uh, a huge, massive uh, military front. Yeah. Now, how exactly does uh, somehow uh, stopping people from going to private school lead to the destruction of bees? Uh, because you take away the ability for them to have, you incentivize students to go away from private universities to public universities because you're giving them a huge financial incentive. And this takes away a lot of their funding as a result. So the next argument on, so let's go on to case. The first argument they make is that there's going to be an economic benefit of attending universities and that there are going to be more qualified students and that there's going to be less debt. My argument against this is that by increasing the amount of uh, increasing the amount of student aid given to universities, the funding usually takes away from the amount of funding the university itself has to use. The first argument under this is that because there's going to be less funding the universities have available since they're paying a lot of student tuition, the reality is students aren't going to be able to graduate in four years instead of going to be graduating in five or six years because a lot of the budget cuts right now are cutting a lot of the funding. The second argument under this is that it's not going to create a more qualified student because only better education better education, ed- ed- educators will actually create a better student. The second argument they have under here, the second argument they make is that there's going to be a lot of family and that the family's going to be- benefit. My argument is that these students actually aren't going to have, uh, these families aren't going to actually gain 
Okay, these families aren't going to actually gain a benefit because they don't actually. Uh, all right. about banking system, how it's very corruptive. It can be read a lot to slavery, dehumanizing and op um, oppression, but all of this, the whole idea behind slavery is that you're contained and not vol like vul uh, voluntarily able to leave. But we see with colleges, so it's not a voluntary thing. And all, if all the population of California believes that the banking lecture system is dehumanizing and brainwashing, that they can voluntarily leave. So really, this isn't slavery. This isn't something that's terrible. And this isn't just, um, this is a nationwide way of learning. We see that it, once a uh, adult or brain matures that part of it is lecturing and then part of it is figuring out yourself. It's actually really beneficial. You don't have to agree with everything that's being said in the lecture, but you do have to recognize and realize it, be able to regurgitate it. But you, from there, you can make your own opinion. You can make your own um, ideas about it, and that's actually extremely beneficial. Again, actually, our plan is going to decrease class sizes, which will um, allow the banking system to decrease. With more money going to colleges, we're going to see that the class sizes um, will be able to decrease because currently universities are on a screen. Um, of money to make sure uh, that they can continue on, so they're compacting classes, but by doing this, we're going to be able to decrease class sizes, and then we're going to see have more hands-on, more projects. We also see that banking system isn't always, yes, teachers do lecture, but then they also have um, study groups where you can meet and talk, and talk with TAs, talk about it in smaller groups, more hands-on. So really, all these classes that they're assuming that are banking collection system really um, is really not accurate and whatsoever. And we don't really see the net uh, detriments that are occurring out of this. Our whole population, our parents, you guys, everyone here is that goes through college has had the banking system. They're not corrupt. They don't think it's dehumanizing. Again, you can voluntarily leave if you believe this is corrupting the system. Um, now to go into first contention, they said that people will um, now will just uh, stop going to private schools and only going to UCs, but we have to look at how the system works. We're going to college, not everybody's going to be able to get in. There's still going to be the same application process. You still have to be accepted. You still have to um, study and meet the SAT scores and stuff. So not everybody is going to be able to get into the UC of their choice. Therefore, they don't want to go to private school. If you want to go outside of state, and um, you're going to go to generally a private school, again, there's not everybody can get into a UC um, university, so therefore people are still going to be going to private schools. And again, when you look at their pay about the banking lecture system, if you're really that big of a problem to it, you can go to a smaller liberal arts school where it's very hands-on, completely different learning style. So really we see that you have two choices, um, so that's really not an issue whatsoever. They, um, some point under this said there's going to be no research funding. Um, we said actually the research funding is going to increase for colleges because the fact that um, the money, um, all the money from the taxes will be then going to the state allocated fairly to the universities and of their needs. So therefore that will be covered. But all the research donation, or excuse me, all the donations that are voluntarily by the public that go to financial aid will now be able to go to research. So all the donations that are given to universities, that can go to research, that can go to classes. They don't have to worry about tuition and people on financial aid. So actually what you're doing is taking the money, fairly allocating it to the different schools and their needs, um, and then the uh, donations that a lot of schools do rely on, that's going to be able to go to helping the classroom and actually helping the student itself, not worrying about financial aid program programs. Now to get into the um, contentions of side government, our first contention is about the economic benefit. I'd like to make it clear that side opposition pretty much dropped our whole case. Um, they did refute one part about the universities not graduating on the university, but uh, we know silence is consent and debate. Therefore, um, all the contentions that they have not um, refuted do go across the flow, but I'll still get into them anyway. Our first contention is about the individual level, about um, how by allowing people to um, paying for their college tuition, we're allowing them to not stay away from loans because we know a lot of students with um, California having um, thirty to forty thousand dollars tuition in state a year. Um, 
it's one of the most expensive where they're going on loans just to go to college. Those loans don't disappear. They gather up then for when they get out of college, you're still having to pay for them. That's affecting them for the rest of their lives. When they have a job, they're not able um, to uh, start a family and um, do as many things as they want because they have these loans that are haunting them forever and ever. It also decreases the grad admittance rate because when students um, or people who want to go to grad school, because when you have all these loans that are stacked up for undergrad, you cannot afford grad school, nor do you want to increase loans. By doing this, um, we're saying that, okay, you can have your undergrad paid for and then go to graduate school on um, however ways and means of money you can afford. Um, so that's going to increase the populace. We see that a lot of the graduate schools give a higher um, education of learning, which is really needed in today's society when we know it's so competitive. This will get an advantage to college students. I'll take you to the end if I have time, sorry. Um, um, our B contention is about families will have more money. This will not only help the student itself, but it'll help the family who has to um, currently pay for the student where they're sacrificing um, their own retirement, so they're not being able to retire when they want. They're taking away from other, not investing in the economy, and they have other kids to worry about. So this will allow them for parents to be able to retire, it'll allow them to help their um, other family members not fall into poverty and then fall into social welfare programs where the government is currently having to pay for them. So we see that's economic benefits for the family, the individual, and together you have to look at this collectively. This takes a huge burden of stress that happens to um, families when having to pay for college. That is the thing from when you're little child. So this is going to also reduce stress altogether, which is very beneficial for everybody. Our third C under this about universities so schools have consistent money. We see that currently a lot of the UCs and um, state schools don't have fair allocations of money, but by doing this again, it's going to go into the state head first, be allocated fairly to the rest of schools. So it's going to allow a school who generally may not receive as much money, have a fair amount of money, and um, a bigger university have more money, which then for, we see that classes are going to be um, better, they're going to be less uh, large. So that's going to increase the um, educational value that a student is receiving. Um, they won't have to be focusing on how um, to pay for the school. They'll also be able to study more. Universities will just increase from there. Third is state. We won't have to be relying on social services. Or less people have to be relying on social services because they can't afford um, school when... Or uh, excuse me, when they get out of school, they'll have they won't have um, large loans, so therefore they won't have to be relying on social services, fall out of poverty. Or we look at the people who don't go to college simply on the fact that they can't afford it, and they know it, so then they go straight into poverty. They're on social service because they're either unemployed, can't get a job because they don't have a graduate degree or uh, undergrad degree. So therefore, we're seeing that the government is going to be able to save money in the long term, not have to um, pay as much for social services. Our third, is, our second connection is about societal benefits. Sub A under this is about community service. We see that people are more publicly aware. The young people will be getting more involved and see um, where um, what society is currently doing. Therefore, they're going to be one, one yet more um, involved with politics, more likely to vote. We see that's a big trend and Statistically, when you have people involved in community services, they're more likely to vote because they see discrepancies in what the government is doing in assisting these people. That's a huge benefit that the United States can see. We know that a lot of people aren't voting at a young age. This will have long-term benefits for the long run. Um, and our B contention under this is it increased diversity, or it increases diversity. My partner will um, get more into this. Thank you. Alright, so a lot of the debate based on the affirmative side has been based on assumptions in today's round. Now, the affirmative is telling you that class sizes would stay the same, but in reality, when you incentivize more students to go to public universities, there's, always, there's obviously going to be an increase in class sizes because you can't account for the amount of teachers that you need to go into Cal the amount of teachers that you need for the greater amount of students enrolling within California. The College of California plan actually, no thank you, the College of, Cal no, thank you. The College of California plan actually incentivizes more students to go in and project an enrollment. According to the Calif according to the California Population Report, would say that by, uh, by passing this plan, be an increase in student enrollment for public universities. So because of that, there's an increase in public and students in public universities. The student to, uh, to take the student to teacher ratio actually goes up within California. So that upholds our K because a lot of the, their only response to the, our critique was, "Oh, class sizes are going to stay the same," but they're actually proliferating the effect of the banking banking system because class sizes are going up. They don't the student to teacher ratio is going up. Their other responses that study groups are actually going to prevent this critique from happening. But remember that study groups aren't really effective in preventing this critique from happening because it's the educators who um, who start the critical discourse, not the students. And you can't recognize this critical discourse that's happening. You can't recognize that you're a member of the depositors because you don't recognize that dehumanization occurs. Remember that people don't critically consider reality under the influence of the banking system, but they're ma uh, but masking the... Um, 
But um, remember that the impact on humanity that happens, that the impact of dehumanization today is not always anything they could bring into this round, but you have your own opinion, but you're only allowed to voice it. You're only allowed to voice it through the voice of an educator. You don't really have a voice when you affirm their plan. The, plan, the entire idea of human welfare and uh, ontological vocation is destroyed with the affirmative plan because they're proliferating the amount of people in California universities right now. And with that, they're increasing the amount of... Um, and they're increasing the use of the banking system within California. They're going back into the disadvantage. They talk about how research universities aren't going to be hurt by this because the plan actually increases the amount of research university enrollment. But remember that when you incentivize people to go into a public university like California, go into public UC universities, you incentivize them to apply, you incentivize them to enroll into these universities over, over private universities. I mean, if I'm choosing between USC and UC Berkeley, I'm obviously going to choose UC Berkeley because I'll have no cost to it. But when I'm doing that, I have the research universities, the private universities, actually lose money and they they don't respond to our impact about the bees and they don't respond to how the, when these private universities lose money we lose money towards bee research and when we lose bee research we lose money towards agriculture and when we don't have agriculture uh, we drop in CO2 in the environment when we drop in CO2 in the environment we can't produce agriculture we die for two reasons one we don't have agriculture so we don't have food and two we run out of oxygen we die for these two reasons this has gone uncontested in today's round it's extended across the flow they don't have any response to, to these two arguments um so remember that their entire case right now is based off assumptions. They're assuming that, oh, every student that enrolls in a UC will have a 2.7 GPA or 70 hours of community service. That's the entire, their entire case is based off assumptions. All their impacts in the first round for students are based off assumptions because they won't be in debt, but if they don't maintain the 2.7 GPA, they'll still be in debt. They'll still be in debt. They won't pay less money because they'll still have this. They'll still have the burden. The um, they have the burden of paying for the, uh, maintaining a 2.7 GPA or 70 hours of community service. And if they don't do that, you still trigger. Uh, you don't trigger any of their advantages. The students will still have to pay more. They won't be. They'll still be in debt. Community service won't work because. It's easier for them to maintain a 2.7 GPA than uh, do 80 hours of community service. Turn this argument because it actually decreases the amount of community service. It decreases the uh, need for community service in society because more people will be focusing on actually maintaining the GPA. Turn this, turn their second advantage. Getting more into this debate, remember that we're telling you that going back into the going back into our own arguments, we're telling you that the banking education will be proliferated by affirming their plan because when the banking education uh, when the banking system is proliferated in society right now, it leads to dehumanization. The impact of this outweighs anything that the affirmative can propose to you in today's round. No, thank you. It outweighs anything that the affirmative can propose to you in this round because the impact of dehumanization is severely more significant to both California to California than the impact of saving a few thousand dollars. Um, Remember that we can't recognize dehumanization, or they can't critically consider that they're recognizing dehumanization. Well, the problem with their plan is that it proliferates the banking system to a point where they were, where they will trigger dehumanization happening. Remember the other point on their remember that the other point of their case for societal benefits on community service turn this argument because more people will look towards maintaining a 2.7 GPA because the amount of time the amount of free time students have in college is less than five percent. When they have five percent when they have less than five percent free time, they can't use that free time for actual community service. And when they don't use that free time for community service service they devote they devote it more to studying. And when they devote it more to studying they won't be, they won't actually participate in community service. So it de incentivizes the amount of people actually participating in community service because they don't want to do it. They'd rather work towards a GPA. It creates a standard in, a, in the minds of these people of California that, oh, it's better for me to work towards myself rather than work towards the rest of my community because it's easier for me to work towards myself. It's easier for me to benefit myself in my own and, and maintain my 2.7 GPA rather than work for 70 hours of community service right now. Um, so turn their second advantage. The first advantage is only triggered if they assume that every single student will have a 2.7 GPA or a... Um, a 2.70 GPA or 70 hours of community service. Remember, they're telling, going down the flow on the economic case. Remember, the um, all they're telling you is that oh, students will be less in debt. Or remember that when they're dehumanized by the banking system itself, we outweigh on that. Remember that they won't necessarily be less in debt because that's under the assumption that they maintain a 2.7 GPA or 70 hours of community service. Remember that the families. They're telling you that the burden uh, the burden um, reduces on the families, but actually increases on the people on the both the student and the families, because now the student is pressured to maintain his GPA or else forced to drop out. Meaning that if I go to college based on the assumption that it will be free for me, and then later on when I get to college I find out that I don't maintain my 2.7 GPA or I don't maintain my 70 hours of community service, and I was a person from a rural area, I'm left to drop out of college because I don't have because I would have money to actually pay for my college funding, it'll lead to an increase in dropouts, actually. So turn their second advantage. It'll lead to an increase in dropouts because for those who don't maintain a 2.7 GPA or 70 hours of community service and enroll in college under the assumption that they will receive a full ride from college, they would be forced to drop out or take on loans and the debt within college because they aren't 
uh, because they won't be able to afford college later on. So going into the debate right now, you're going to be voting yay for a few reasons. One, we wanted to critique because we show you that we value, extend the framework and the alt in our case right now because we're showing you that you should always value dehuman, the dehumanization of the California citizens over the fact of saving a couple of thousands of dollars because they're going to be dehumanized because of the proliferation of the banking system. Remember, remember that we're showing you that the end of the world will happen if you don't actually affirm our plan because private universities are critical to be research, but their plan de-incentivizes the amount of enrollees and research, therefore de-incentivizes the young people actually, uh, it de-incentivizes and uh, decreases their endowment, so bee research won't be enacted, therefore it'll lead to the end of the world due to no agriculture, no CO2, etc. Remember, I turn the second societal benefits and my partner will get to the rest. So, um, do the So it'll go. Oh Alright. So, wait, five minutes speech. It'll go. It'll go. The critique, disadvantage, and then voters. And I think you should blow the voters on another sheet of paper. That's up to your discretion, though. Okay. But I'll go to the voters after everything else. Remember, the affirmative conceded on a lot of arguments in today's debate. The first argument they conceded on was the framework. The second argument was they conceded that the plan actually triggers the critique. And the third argument, that the third part of the critique that they actually conceded on, well, the internal links and the impact. Remember, they conceded the fact that in a world in which we endorse the banking system and the California educational system endorses the banking system, we create the dehumanization of human beings, the oppression of human beings, and we create a zero battle life. This is key to the debate for a couple of reasons, because we outweigh on everything they have. The second part under this is that, remember, my partner responds to everything, but all their arguments they make on our critique are essentially defensive. They say that because uh, that slavery is inherently involuntary and that you are forced into the system. But my argument is that because people don't critically consider reality, because the banking system maps reality in the form of information, then people won't actually consider the fact that they're being dehumanized. The fact of the matter is, when you're in the banking system and you're being forced this information, the information that the oppressor or the teacher gives you, teaches you that you are not, that you're not a slave when you're a student. But in reality, you are a slave because you're forced and given information. You're not having a discretion in the information you get. The second argument they make is that you can have your own opinion. I agree, you can have your own opinion, but at the cost of the teacher's opinion, the teacher won't allow that, and he'll just simply fail you, forcing those kids to stay in the system and to accept whatever the teacher has. The third argument, uh, third argument they make is that the plan actually decreases uh, class sizes. But remember, Marco's PO. When I asked Marco if it's going to increase the amount of students in the system or it's going to affect the student population, he said it doesn't. And remember, my uniqueness in the framework that shows you why Neff Gardner's article "Why Must Change" shows you that 99% of everything is lecture-based, thus banking system. Based. So my partner made all these responses before. I'm just reiterating them. So let's go on to the disadvantage. Remember, they considered all the links to the plan. They considered all the uniqueness. They considered all the internal links. All they just said is that people are still going to go to private universities. My partner turned this by saying people are still going to go, but there are enough people. And when there aren't enough people in the private uh, university educational system, that means they're not going to be able to get enough subsidies and research grants, which are key in research for bees, because bees are at the are at the chopping block of the budget, meaning they want to chop off bee research from California research universities. This went unconceded the entire debate. Remember, if we uh, if we don't have those bees, uh, the bee research anymore, which is critical, and they conceded it was critical to actually the uh, solving the bee issue that's going on in the world right now, then at that point, we're not going to be able to research find the research and the cure for these bees. In other words, these bees are going to continually die, resulting in the uh, resulting in them being unable to pollinate our agriculture. Now our agriculture is key into our entire plan because in a world in which bees don't are able to call, uh, cultivate the agriculture because we haven't found the cure for them, because the California universities didn't get that funding because of the lack of students, and then at that point, the agriculture all goes away. Meaning, when there's zero agriculture, that means there's zero plants on the planet. Meaning, there's going to be a lot of things like global warming. The first, the second is that there's going to be a research War. They conceded that there would be an entire research war if there were a lack of bees. The third argument they conceded was that in a world without uh, agriculture, people would starve, thus leading to dehumanization. So whether you buy the critique or you buy the uh, you buy the disadvantage, you're still going to see de de dehumanization across the flow. So let's go on to voters. 
The first reason why you should be voting for the affirmative in today's round is the critique. They also they conceded to a lot of uh, they conceded to all my uh, impacts. They conceded that dehumanization, that zero value of life, and that oppression would be, be created in a world in a California where all of these things are existent and people are just existing in a uh, in a material reality, a reality in which they don't consider uh, critical or they don't actually consider it to be true. That is a world in which they uh, in which they masquerade themselves in material paradise.